Sean, you are absolutely correct in guessing. Who's the daily review? <laughs> So. All right. Oh, uh, well, that was not my intention of, 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 oy vey. <laughs> I guess expressions are lost on some people. Anyway, folks, um, the first story that l looked quite interesting, and I'm not entirely sure how, how accurate this is. There was a report, PCA basically said, well, the headline made it seem as though the PCA said, well, officers just not wear any body cameras. And I think it's more nuanced at that, but they did point to examples of high profile cases, or, or rather cases with um, police shootings, where it seemed as though they had body cameras, but they weren't switched on. So we have these body cameras, the TTPS, I think in that case, it could have been municipal police, so I'm not entirely sure the relationship there with the TTPS structure versus the local government structure. But the point is the police is, is potentially facing a perception, a, a PR issue, where people don't always have confidence that they are clean and they aren't too much, I guess you should say, rogue elements in the service. We have body cameras. Um, I do remember ASP Ali, it could have been off here. He, he gave us an explanation on some of the difficulties with them, but the long and short is if you're going to have these confrontations and the cameras are off, it, it poses a lot of questions, and it, uh, and it doesn't necessarily leave a good taste in people's mouths. Well, let me just alter something that you just said. There is no potential PR issue. There is a PR issue. Mm. But just for that, for the very same reason that the Trans Tobago Police Service uh, has media ambassadors assigned to almost every station across the island. But the issue is, for me, is what are the proper rules and procedures as it relates to body cameras? Whether or not they exist in terms of being actual rules or whether it is just somebody, your senior, saying you have to do this. Mm. You know, in other words, if I don't follow the instructions, um, the instructions, uh, you know, could I actually be um, reprimanded for that? Can I, can I be brought forward to a tribunal, can I face any disciplinary, um, you know, standings for that? Um, because what's the point of having body cameras if you're not going to use it? That's one, because that's a cost to me. I think body cameras are good. I think they're necessary right now, especially. Um, but I also believe that what is the point in wasting money if it's not going to be properly utilized? You can resource the TTPS, but if the TTPS is not doing their part, then they're feeling me, and I'm just thinking, listen, this is not making any sense. Furthermore, uh, Sean, here's the problem, and I think you just mentioned it. Um, if it is that you have a confrontation, and if it is an officer has a body camera on, um, and when I say on, they're actually wearing it, but it's not operational, and something happens, some incident happens, exactly. uh, you know, and then when you're trying to do an investigation or complete an investigation, you realize, hold on, the body cameras were off. Mm -hmm. Isn't that suspicious in itself? And that's exactly where I wanted to go because to me, this is not like, oh, you have to do this procedure instead of that procedure, or we're adding this duty to your job description and the union is contesting, well, how are you just adding to our job description without checking with the union first? This is, we're talking about something that could have a record of a violent incident which potentially protects the officer. So I don't think there's any real reason. Um, the, the Police and Social Welfare Association president, he, he noted that this was a step in the right direction, but at times people could be resistant to change. This is not using different colored pens. This is not changing the forms. This is not switching from paper to computers. This is not going from a time clock with a card to a fingerprint scanner. This is something that will greatly enhance transparency. So when they have police shootings, it yes. could probably 99% of the doubt could be cleared up, which is why when they're, when you, when they're being worn but are not on during a shooting, one must ask themselves. Because if it was me, I'm like, well, I'm going to turn it on so that in case anybody wants to falsely accuse me of anything, I have evidence. So, yes. Yes, but at the same time, uh, on, on that note yeah. as well, one, I, you know, coming from a union, it does not surprise me that that is the comments that they would make. In fact... At least he's not against it. He's not against it, but 
honestly, you know, as head of a union, he's just acting as a lame duck, because quite frankly, that's nonsensical that he just stays I in. actually think that having, like, having your cameras and not putting it on, there should be a penalty, like some sort of punishment for it. And especially if you have a body camera and you engaged in some sort of shootout, right? Unless there is a reason, an explanation. I was switching batteries or, or something like that. No. On a practical level. That, that's right? not how it works. That, that's not how it works. And I think you are well aware that's not how it works as well, body well, cameras. Well, true, true. You know, so it's, it's absolutely... It should just be on. It's absolutely... It should be on. In fact, in the United States, what happens? If we use that as an example. Now, people might argue U.S. police services are not the best example. No, but, they, no, no they are. But... Because they're an example of why you need them on all the time. And that's a good point. Procedure states that once a police officer exits their vehicle, the body camera is to go on. Right. Right? That is the rules. That's once they exit the vehicle, their body camera is supposed to... And, but, but then and again, we live in Trinidad and Tobago, um, and, and rules do not apply to anything. You know what? I think, to some extent... The issue of liability. When you're acting as a police officer proper, I understand that you're an agent of the state. You don't necessarily bear personal liability for what happens. I can't sue a police officer if he, you know, shoots me after I pull out a gun face and try to shoot him. That's kind of ridiculous. However, if something happens and the, and, and the, the events are questionable and the body camera is off, I would argue that then perhaps liability, the state should no longer be able to shield that individual from what could come out of those incidents. And that is probably the biggest problem that there is. Because officers realize, whole, and, 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 and need I just say, this not only to about body cameras as well, this is on a whole as it relates to resources for the trans police service. For example, vehicles and the conditions of vehicles. Mm. Police officers know, I don't have to pay for this. Police officers know, I'm not liable for this. If anything happens, it's not coming out of my pocket. So guess what? Who cares? Even if I break what should be proper procedure, who's going to do something about it, right? Because PC actually investigates serious allegations that are made. But uh, if I'm operating as a trans police officer and my body camera is off, and, and by the way, there are not even that many body cameras available as it relates to the entire staffing of the trans Police Service. So even those who are using it, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are fortunate enough to have it. They're not even seeing the benefits of it, you know. But it points to, it, it just points to me that there is a deeper issue within the trans Police Service, which they say they're trying to stamp out, which they're trying to cut out. Good luck to them, because that's why I don't think they're doing such a great job. And that is perhaps rogue police officers. I, I say perhaps because I think that's the most appropriate way to describe it right now. People don't understand transparency. And it might, yes, there will always be things, even for a law-abiding um, um, operator or, 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 or public servant would have to keep secret from the public because it's just it's not appropriate. I get that. But for the most part, when it looks as though you're trying to hide something, people get suspicious. So you can't blame people. <laughs> you cannot blame people because, again, we go back to the question. You're an incident. You're wearing a body camera. It's not on. Something happens. It's not on. Why? Why is it not on? What is the explanation? What possible explanation could you have that's going to allay fears? Because, to, to be fair, you could stage battery problems. You could stage um, um, technical issues if you know what you're doing. Right? There's always that possibility. It's best to just have it on. I guess... As long as you're not trying to hide anything. In, in, in the most appropriate way, people are not clear on transparency. Mm. 